Anyways, this is the holy sh**. Isn't that f***ing cool kind of a video? Uh, this is me giving you commentary on... Uh, letting you know about something that another YouTuber just made a video on and was given the opportunity to cover. I hope he's alright with it. I'm sure he is. Uh, links in the description to the original content piece. Uh, I'm not going to play the video in full, even remotely close to, so I'm not ripping it off or anything like that. But uh, this is either going to be a dystopian, sort of terrifying thought to a lot of people, or it's going to be fascinating and open up your eyes to a, a whole new world of possibilities once you see it kind of thing. But either way, it's right up our streets, and it's something that I just honestly need to cover. I can't, I can't help it. Uh, so this is Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. He's an exceptionally talented content creator. I've been following him for a long time. He runs a channel with half a million subs. Doesn't need my referral. <laughs> he doesn't need my help. But he normally does VR games. But yesterday he collabed with a company called Extend Robotics. And he made a video called, I remotely control a $14,000 robot using VR. And this video is not doing great on his channel, unfortunately, which I'm sure he's devastated. I've, I've caught him in this kind of, he looks like he's singing the opera. Uh, Stan, sorry, Mike. Uh, but, yeah, it's very it's a very different video to what he normally puts into his audience, so I don't think it's resonating with them all that well. Which he's he's going to be gutted at because this is an insanely interesting content, and you could tell that Mike was into it. But it's all about this company who went into the Dragon's Den, got investment. I'm sure you've got something similar in the US, but it's the investors who you know want to or don't want to invest in an entrepreneur's idea, and it's all to do with controlling a robot manipulator arm through virtual reality. So that's what this guy's doing. He's controlling that robot arm using what looks like a Quest 2. Now that's kind of nothing new really, re remotely controlling a robot arm. We've seen that in Search and Rescue where a, a pilot or an operator is controlling a wheeled robot using uh, remote controls. But it's generally been looking at the controls through a flat panel screen. This is very different because that robot is being viewed through these two cameras here. They're not your average Logitech webcams or your iPhone cameras. Those are Intel RealSense depth cameras. These, in the interests of simplicity, are basically laser scanners. They're laser scanning the surrounding area around that robot arm and feeding a real-time live meshed laser scan into the VR headset. So he's looking at the surrounding environment as a real-time meshed laser scan, a volumetric live environmental scan that he's looking at. It's almost like he's looking at a holodeck in the VR environment. And that just opens up a world of opportunities, bearing in mind he doesn't even need to be in the same room. He can be right now sat in Australia or Singapore or France or anywhere. So Mike, uh, after these guys got their investment, uh, they, well, they went and worked on the prototype. Uh, brought it to, it's not necessarily to market right now. They are selling a dev kit. If you want to check this out yourself, you actually can, it's available as a dev kit right now. But they've worked with Mike, and to his credit, you know, he's trying to make this as really relatable as he can to his audience by, you know, you can make sandwiches and stuff like that. Within This is just fascinating. You know, as much as the visuals aren't perfect, it's the possibilities of what this is going to be like in a few years' time when the cameras have been worked on a little bit more, when the visuals are a little bit better, when a few developers have jumped on board of, with this and a few government agencies have made it, maybe adapted it. Uh, possibly a bit terrifying as well. But, but when you see what Mike does here uh, and where he is in the world and where that robot arm is somewhere else in the world and the levels of precision he's able to achieve, it just opens up your eyes to, to what's potentially possible with this. At some point, he's able to actually pour a drink into a glass or a cup using VR and the robot arm, which is just mind-blowing. And one of the examples that Mike gives is you could have a surgeon based in Australia able to perform surgery on a patient in France and doing it using a VR headset with the robot arm holding the scalpel doing the surgery and a surgeon somewhere else in the world. That is rather terrifying, but it's one step closer to that being a reality. And if that means it's having your life safe, because that surgeon's the only one in the world capable of doing it, you know, we're one step closer to that. Now, not going to lie, I'm not quite sure at this point I'm ready to have my surgeon performing surgery on me uh, with a scalpel in my spleen whilst he's looking at me through that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> this, and there's also too many links in the chain between the surgeon and the technology. That could break, you know power lines, internet cables and water, power at his house, power at uh, this location. But we're one step closer to that, you know. These green areas, these are dead zones as well. 
And um, the, the operators of these who are expected to use this equipment, they would argue, look, if you're expecting us to use this for any kind of serious, you know, life-saving work or military exercises or bomb disposal, mine sweeping and search and rescue, fire rescue, any kind of area where you need to send something in other than a human to do this sort of critical work, then these sort of dead zones obviously need to be cleared up. The speckles and artifacts need to be removed. You need to have a good draw distance. You need to have good resolution. Uh, the latency and the lag needs to be super good. This is one step closer to that, you know, and I just want to thank Mike for creating this and bringing it to to light that this is actually happening and we're one step closer to this. And in our industry, inspections, sending a drone up into an area where you couldn't get a human to, you can scale this up or you can scale it down. You know, real sense cameras mounted to a drone scanning volumetric live feeds of areas needing inspections. Underwater, that could potentially work if you can get an internet cable or feed down to an underwater area instead of a pilot looking at a feed on a monitor. You could have a live scanned feed to a pilot on deck instead of uh, on a flat panel screen. Space exploration, all kinds of things. Contamination zones, you name it. All the things that we're doing now on, on flat panel screens could be replaced by this uh, with the volumetric scanning. So thanks, Mike, for doing that, mate. That was an absolutely awesome video. And as much as I'm sure you got it, that it's not doing great on your channel. And I feel you on that one, mate. <laughs> I, I, I understand that. Yeah, the dev kit's available if you want to get on board with that. You know, there's, there's a lot of use cases that I think this can open up it's there if you want to have a go of it. I'll put some links in the description to the, the the manufacturer of this who've got their own videos for trade shows that they've done. If you want to check those out as well. The dystopian nature to this and the terrifying job losses that this could potentially open up. I can't remember the last time that that was a thing. The, the last bit of technology that was, oh, this is going to cause loads of people's you know, job losses and whatnot. But yeah, no, it is quite scary, but and not everybody gets the opportunity to adapt, but this is a, the reality of, you know, the workplace adapting and evolving. It, it happens. There is always a shift in certain areas and an evolution in certain areas. And, you know, the, the, for every job that's lost, an opening will appear for a, an operator and for a, for developers to, to develop for this technology. So not everyone will get that opportunity to become one of those. But unfortunately, that's just that's the evolution. You know, the history is littered with examples of how that's been a thing. But anyway, thanks again to Mike for making that video and bringing it to light. Hope you found that interesting. Links are in the description to Mike's video. Please go and watch that because with audio and with the full context, you'll find that a fascinating watch with all the little nuggets of information in there that I'm not able to provide because I want you to watch his video. But thanks for watching this one. My name's Neil Cross. This has been Tech3D. See you in the next one. Toodles.